How's it hanging, everybody? So today, I'm here to give you my final thoughts on Fantasian. I'm going to offer a full review of this game. This game, a passion project from Hironobu Sakaguchi, creator of Final Fantasy. Uh, this is from him and his team at Mistwalker Studios. It is exclusive to Apple Arcade. As far as I know, Apple funded this game in full. So hopefully, it will come to other platforms but I'm not holding my breath. Um, if it comes to other platforms, it will be a perfect opportunity to fix this game. This game really has some problems that are really unnecessary, and I'm not sure exactly why they did things this way, but I've put about 100 hours into the game, to the, to, into the main game, uh, and I'm, I'm ready to talk to you guys about this. I wanna give you my full review. I think it's very important that I mention that it is a full review of the game and not just a review of part one of the game because first of all let's be clear Fantasian is a singular experience it's one game but it was released in chunks so the first chunk of the game came out in April of this year 2021 uh, and that was known as part one later in the year August they came out with part two of Fantasian that's the rest of the game basically the rest of the main game that was known as part two and so part one is just a very different experience. And that's what most people's reviews are based on. When you look at the Metacritic for Fantasian, it's, you're talking about Fantasian part one. But part two, like I said, very different experience. And that's where most of the problem is with Fantasian. It's that disparity of the experience of part one and part two. So first of all, part one, has does a really good vertical slice of the game you get all the best parts of fantasian you get the really cool battle system you get the inclusion of something called the dimension which basically cuts down on random encounters and lets you fight them all in a big giant uh, fight where you're fighting you know between 20 and 50 uh, enemies all at once and it's a really genius way to cut back on the monotony of random encounters and lets you bank them all in this like Ghostbusters device where you get to just beat them all at once. Uh, pretty cool thing. And uh, the story of the game is something that people have been critical of. I actually really like the story of Fantasian. Uh, it's simple. It's not gonna knock your socks off. It has plenty of JRPG tropes. They're not reinventing the wheel here with the story, but it's a nice story. It, it's a story that kept me fairly engaged um, in part one. And most of the story I found was truly in part one. By the end of part one, I felt like I knew most of the characters fairly well. I knew their connections to each other. I knew the how they related back to the big story, the big picture, and everything flowed and was you know pretty nice story-wise i thought i also have these things called memories uh which uh, are these kind of graphic novel style cutscenes, which give you more uh context for each character's history and i really like those they're all really well done they have great music behind them uh, and that's leads me into probably the best part of Fantasian for me is the music. I mean, the music in this game is from, I'm not even going to remember his name and I feel bad, but it's uh, Nobuyu Etsuya. I can't remember his name and I apologize, but he is a, uh, a JRPG uh, sound tracking legend. He's done, uh, I've enjoyed a lot of his works over the years. He also did uh, the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters, which I've been enjoying as well. Uh, like basically remade all of his own music from those games and it's fantastic. I love what he did in those remasters and I love what he did here in Fantasian. This has to be one of the best game soundtracks I've ever heard, probably the best. Not, not kidding, it's that good. I even bought the CD because uh, that's really the only like physical media you can buy of this game right now. So anyway, the, the soundtrack, epic, incredible, great, very synth heavy, but also very orchestral when it needs to be, and just a, a fantastic soundtrack. Uh, hits so many angles, has so much going on, so much variety. Uh, I can't say enough good things about the soundtrack. 
And then there's the art direction, the dioramas are handmade. Every environment that you're in in this game is a handmade diorama, and that is incredible. They did 160 of these things, uh, which is just kind of boggles the mind, but they did an exceptional job. It gives the world this nice, like intricate, intricate intimate feel, um, and it, it feels a lot like, you know, some of the other really good uh, games, like on, honestly, on on mobile, like uh, Lumino City, I think was one of those games that had a lot of handmade art and stuff and the environments that you walk around in. So definitely a really cool and different look for a JRPG. So uh, also, the we're still talking about part one of the game here, by the way. All this is, is part of part one. The difficulty of part one starts out very easy very easy and I even commented on this when I did my first impressions of the game I said hey this game is really accessible and I like that I like that I'm just gonna be able to play this game and not you know sweat bullets and not like have anxiety about the difficulty well <laughs> that took a turn in part two and that's really the biggest flaw and almost a downfall of the game is the difficulty disparity between parts one and two Part one starts out really easy. It then levels out into a very average difficulty of a game. And I am a very average difficulty kind of person. Like I like games that are, you know, just let me play on a normal difficulty that are not uh, super brutal. Uh, and if a game is super brutal, I'm not that likely to check it out or play it. So this game, uh, definitely the difficulty absolutely snuck up on me. Uh, in part two of the game, because part one, again, it's average, manageable difficulty. Let's take a look really quick, if we can, at, uh, let's see, I want to do, this is from The Verge. This is was posted um, from Andrew Webster on TheVerge.com, April 14th, this is right around the time the game first released in part one. Uh, Fantasian isn't just charming, it's the most approachable JRPG I've ever played. And that's not wrong. That's actually an accurate sentiment on this little vertical slice of the game that Andrew played. Then let's go over to this, which is from RPG Site. This is a full review of Fantasian from August of this year from James Galizio. And if we scroll down here, he has this to say, Fantasian is a very, very difficult RPG. He is also not wrong. In fact, I've been talking to lots of different people about Fantasian, and I have found that most people who know a lot about JRPGs and have played Fantasian, they say that this game is up there among the toughest games they've ever played. A few people have even said it's the toughest JRPG they've ever played. Um, this game could be compared to like games in the Saga series, which are brutally difficult. Games in the Tensei series, Shin Megami Tensei, which are known for their difficulty, as well as things like Octopath Traveler, if we're looking for a newer example. Um, these are brutally difficult JRPGs, and Fantasian, as far as I understand, is right up there in the same conversation. Now, I am not, as I mentioned, I'm an average player. I, I like my normal difficulty games. So, essentially, in part one of the game, you beat part one and it tells you you've beat part one. It tells you you're going into the second part of the game. It's a different vibe. It has quests and it has like, a, you know, it's more based around quests and less around story. And it tells you that, and that's true. But it doesn't tell you that not only is it more difficulty, like the, forget difficulty spikes. This is not a difficulty spike. When you finish part one, it goes from a normal difficulty game to an ultra hard difficulty game. It's like they flipped a switch. And pretty much from the onset of part one, excuse me, from the onset of part two, you are inundated with an incredible, incredibly difficult JRPG. Now, the dimension battles, the random encounters are not so bad, but it's the bosses. 
and there are tons of bosses because really most of the areas in the game are are not long they're short because they're all based around these you know handmade dioramas so i figure they probably just made these short areas short dungeons and then made it a really boss heavy game because uh, well, they don't have to design every boss by hand. So that's the way that they can stretch out the gameplay and they can make it so, you know, the, the, the dungeons are real, but the bosses are really the star of the show when it comes to the difficulty. Maybe not every boss in part two, but most bosses in part two are like final boss level difficulty every every time like every time these can go on for 20 30 minutes on apple arcade by the way which is really i feel like part two of this game is really not a mobile friendly game the game stops being mobile friendly in part two you really have to play this on a computer or on an apple tv or you're gonna lose your mind trying to play this i mean i mean you're not gonna be able to play a, a 30 minute or, or like a you know the fight the final boss was i'm not even going to say how long it was it was very long the final boss you can't have a battle like that and uh and have like notifications coming in on your phone and like all the and also when you fight these bosses you really have to study you have to study these bosses they are very demanding of your skills they test every dimension of everything you can learn in this game they make you force you to change your equipment every boss fight you have to change your equipment you have to you know focus on buffs and debuffs and uh you know protecting yourselves against different ailments that are common with different bosses i mean you really have to bring your a game for every boss fight and my advice to you if you choose to play Fantasian, especially part two, just use a guide. Just use a strategy guide, use a walkthrough. And actually, just a moment here, there is a really good uh, web source or source on the web that does uh, Fantasian walkthroughs. And I can't remember the name. I will link in the description of this video. The walkthrough comes from digital uh, digital TQ digital TQ is the site and shout out to digital TQ because they made an amazing walkthrough of this game I will link you to it like I said just use that just use that um, and uh, unless you are a huge sadist for these kinds of games unless you just have to unless you love your brutally difficult games and you want everything to just be a puzzle that you personally solve you chip away at it you find it figure out exactly what to do you don't mind that you die a million times on a boss you you and you alone are going to figure out how to get through it if that's you it's not me man but if it's you uh feel free to not use a guide but for everyone else i recommend just swallowing your pride and using a guide by the way let's talk about strategy guides for a second because back in the day back when i was a young jit coming up in the JRPG game back in the 90s strategy guides were I mean they were very important because we didn't really I mean we had the internet in the 90s but not like today you couldn't just Google search and find you know a buffet of different advice and forums and and uh, walkthroughs and video guides and all these different kinds of things those just weren't out there so strategy guides were huge back in the 90s and a lot of game developers actually you know they wanted you to buy that guide because that's extra money for them a lot of them published their own guides uh so it was a big part of the industry back then and i feel like back then when you were using a strategy guide your friends would look at you and say wow you're really studying like how to be good at this game that's impressive you're really smart but now it feels almost like if you're using a guide it's just like more of a crutch or more of a uh you know because you can't handle the game or something but um, honestly screw all that noise like use a strategy guide for this game because you will you may lose your mind if you don't I'm just giving you that fair warning um, now with part two there are just so many bosses it is just a gauntlet of bosses and there's very there, there's seemingly very little time to actually do your grinding and the things you need to do to level up 
because you reach your level cap in a particular area you know very quickly like you'll level up a few times and then you fight and fight again and then you notice those dimension battles they're not leveling you up really anymore they're they're giving you minimal experience points so it would take forever and a day to level up in those areas so what um i lost my train of thought for a second let me let me find my way back here um so these dimension fights they start to stall out they start to not give you the xp that you need and so th at that point all you can really do is just go on and charge into the next boss fight and it's just brutal there were boss fights in this in this game that i spent like just a week chipping away like days out of my week evenings where I would just, I would get home from work. I would sit down. I would just start fighting this boss that just had my number. But today I'm just gonna beat it, I'm gonna do it. And I'd spend the whole night trying to beat it and I couldn't. <laughs> and this is after studying thoroughly. This is after going through all the different motions, looking at you know video footage of how other people did it, looking at strategies, best practices. And, and you know, it's really frustrating to be, to know that you have the right strategy, to know that you're doing everything you can correctly, but for whatever reason, you're just hitting a little bit of bad luck or you maybe just mismanage one turn ever so slightly and that's it. And then 20 minutes or 25 minutes of fighting a boss fight and it's over. And it's really that brutal sometimes. And those are, those, those defeats are kind of heart-wrenching because they're just, they just, they're, they're real morale killers, I would say. They really, they, they, you know, they make you want to quit the game. I almost quit this game so many times. I will say the final boss of this game. Uh, I'm going to mention something about the final boss, and it's it's not a spoiler because I'm not mentioning anything about the story, but I am going to mention, like like many games, this boss fight has, it comes in phases. So you have, you know, for phase one, phase two, whatever. So on the final phase of this boss fight you get like a little checkpoint where you get to you know save your game and stuff and then that final phase i almost quit the game i had come that far i was almost 100 hours in i almost quit i just couldn't quite bring myself to to, to do it and i woke up I, I finished it last weekend one week ago today and i woke up that morning it was a sunday morning i woke up and i had like bar exam level anxiety i was i was dreading i th see this is the thing with one thing you need to know to know about me is that boss fights i don't really they're not my thing because the anxiety they bring on is a lot for me to handle and and uh, honestly i've quit many games at the final boss fight but i just couldn't let myself do it this time i had to push through for whatever reason, I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be better about that. I'm trying to finish games. And so I forced myself to do it. And I finally, finally pulled it off. And I, when I finally did it, after dying, you know, a handful of times and wasting a lot of time only to have the boss, the final boss do something really cheap at the end that I couldn't quite manage. And it's, it's almost a coin flip. Uh, as to whether or not you're gonna have that good luck or that bad luck to just be able to finish the fight. And I, I finally, the stars aligned, I got through that fight. And when I, I when I was done, it wasn't, it, it was definitely a feeling of relief, but it was more like, it, it wasn't a feeling of elation and accomplishment. It was more like a dirty feeling, like a ugh, like a, that that was just a violation of my life i'm so glad that's over i'm so glad i get to have my life back that's essentially how i felt when i beat fantasian it wasn't it wasn't the it wasn't such a celebratory thing it was more like a, a very sobering like wow well, i i spent that time doing that i uh, maybe have some things to think about i don't know um but look here's the thing Fantasian Part Two, absolutely brutal, and it's only—it's it, basically like two fifths of the game, by my estimations. By my estimations, Part One for me was about 20 hours. Part Two was 80 hours. In Part Two, I had—I'm sure I had a lot of idle time because there's just so much time you have to sit there and strategizing and thinking, like equipping and unequipping and and like changing up everything and dying on a boss and dying on a boss again. Just, there's just a lot of 
time that you spend just micromanaging, you know, and stuff. And then um, I will also say, I'll, I'll throw this into the conversation. I, part one, I mentioned in my kind of, in my video when I talked about uh, part one, I played it on a tablet. Uh, and I really liked playing this game on a tablet with part one because I really liked the touch mechanics. I liked, you know, the point and click moving my character around, felt really nice, really natural. The dimension battles and getting those combos on a bunch of enemies, lining them up, felt really good on a tablet. So I, w I was set, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do this on my, my iPad. Uh, but when part two started, I borrowed an Apple TV and I played all pretty much all of part two on an Apple TV. And I'm really glad that I did because if I had tried to play this game any other way, it would have been absolutely brutal to try to, you know, play this on a phone and then have to research and do all of this, you know, look at videos and stuff and then get on my phone. It's just, I, again, part two of this game, it, it's not a good fit for Apple Arcade. But here's the good news. Here's the good news about part two. As I mentioned, the story really kind of fleshes out really nicely in part one. And in part two, you're just getting a little bit of extra context for every for each character. Now, there are some big exceptions. I will say there are some big exceptions. There's some definitely big things, big bombshells that happen in part two. But mostly, mostly, that's tidied up and kind of wrapped up in part one. And part two is just about getting through this gauntlet of bosses until the end of the game. That's mostly what it is. But here's the good news. The soundtrack is still fantastic. There's new new pieces in the mix here. They're, they're great, they're amazing, I love them. They keep, you know, the, the soundtrack keeps coming with the heat and I love that. And uh, the dioramas, the beautiful handmade dioramas, those keep coming as well. I mean, there's 160 of these in the game and I think most of them probably you see in part one, but part two has a, a fair number as well. So those are there as well. Um, what else? Uh, the, the the battle system, you know, it starts to lose its luster a bit, but the dimension battles are, are, are always fun. You know, they're always fun to do unless you're just grinding and grinding and grinding and getting sick of them. Uh, they're actually still really fun throughout the game. Um, and then the main problem with part two is that it's it's very bloated. There are so many boss fights, there are so many story missions that could probably be banked into post-game content or side content, uh, like, like side quests. I think that this game should be pretty heavily abridged. I think that Apple and Mistwalker need to fix this game because, again, the disparity of difficulty and just the overall experience between parts one and two doesn't really make sense. And really, I feel like they did something very sneaky when they revealed part one of this game because part one of this game, that's where all the reviews came in. That's where the high Metacritic score came in. That's where, you know, the game was uh, framed as this really accessible, approachable, like beautiful JRPG. And it was all of those things. And then the game literally turns into probably one of the hardest, brutally difficult JRPGs of all time. I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for it. Again, I mean, I, honestly, I'm kind of, in a, in a weird way, I'm kind of glad that I didn't know that the game was going to be that way because if I had known that, I probably would have avoided Fantasian altogether. But I do think it's fair to let people know what they're getting themselves into. And you need to know, as a potential player of this game, that uh, uh, what's going on with it. It's, it is at the level of like an Octopath Traveler of a game from the Saga series, the Shin Megami Tensei series, it is really, really tough. And honestly, maybe even more tough than those games. Again, the, the random encounter battles, they're not so bad. It's the bosses, but there's so many bosses. Again, a gauntlet of boss fights. And they just, they just never stop. This game, would be a lot better if they cut the overall content of part two into about a half and they banked all of that uh, some of the extra content 
into just find ways to shorten it or find ways to you know make the game maybe less difficult and that way you get through it a little faster and then you know you can have all of this difficulty you can have all this stuff in you know new game plus you can have this extra difficulty in an ultra hard mode of the game it, there's no real reason why this game needs to be this hard for just the average player's first playthrough it just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me and i know um i mean probably the answer is that this has something to do with the subscription-based service that the game is on um, apple may have given uh, sakaguchi and mist walker a little nudge and said hey we need to stretch this out we need you guys to make this uh longer we need to, the experience to be longer because we want people to keep subscribing to apple arcade and we want to give them incentive to keep playing and i guess what they landed on is hey if people played part one and go into part two they're probably going to be hardcore jrpg fans and we want those fans to have a drawn out experience where they're continuing to pay for the service so that they can get through the game that's just a hunch i have no idea the percentage of players that actually finish this game i assume it's not very high so i don't think that's a good strategy for just the way that they made the game or you know it could just be that this was sakaguchi's wish to do this to do it this way i don't understand that either if that's the case i just don't really see the incentive now again there's no reason the game can't be brutally difficult if that's what you wanted it to be from the beginning if it was a game if you framed the game as a very difficult game in part one and then extended into part two there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with making this game also very accessible and approachable if you want it to be that but it can't be both it shouldn't be both but right now it's just that disparity that imbalance between the two parts is really weird and it really really uh, makes the game a lot worse than it really needs to be because again in this game in this shell of all this content and all these bosses and everything happening with the game the story there's a really good game in here and i think that what needs to happen is either this game needs to come to other platforms don't know if that's happening but if it does that's the perfect opportunity to abridge this game and make it a really uh a singular experience that doesn't drag out that doesn't have a, a totally ridiculous like spike in difficulty not even a spike a a difficulty revolution like this this game the 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 jump in difficulty is just it's un, it's not it's like nothing i've ever experienced in a game before it's 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 rough man and this game took a lot out of me it took a lot out of me now part of that could be you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very critical of this game, I'm saying all these things, but part of this could be a me problem. It could be that I focused really too heavily on the side quests because I did every side quest in the game and that's, that's factoring into my overall thoughts on the game. But I should say that, you know, I don't recommend doing the side quests unless they really give you something good. So I would pay attention to that if you're gonna use a walkthrough with this game, which you should, um, but you know, pay attention to that. If there's a side quest that you don't really get anything good from, leave it alone. Don't don't worry about that. Um, spend time doing the things in the game that are actually going to be useful. Go find the treasure chests. Excuse me. Go find the treasure chests in this game that are going to be useful to you. Don't go get all the fluff and stuff that, you know, just, just read a guide and, and stick to it don't do a bunch of extra stuff that you don't need to do is what i say and then that will cut down on the overall play time but you're gonna have to do some of that extra stuff because some items you just absolutely really need to have to make that these bosses and that final boss in particular uh, manageable and doable so guys thank you for checking me out this is probably the last time i'm going to talk about fantasian in a long while i don't see myself doing another or dedicating another video to fantasian until uh you know maybe it comes to other platforms which i just don't know if that's going to happen you know but um either way 
if it does come to other platforms or it doesn't come to other platforms, this game needs to be fixed. Apple needs to fix it or Mistwalker needs to fix it either now on the Apple Arcade version or later. It's just, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Now again, do I recommend the game? I think that's what I should end on, right? Do I recommend uh, Fantasian? Well, here's what I say. I say if you're gonna play Fantasian, play part one and then stop. Because part one is a real, like I said, it's a very brilliant vertical slice of the game. All of the best of Fantasian you can experience in part one. Part two, you know, if you wanna know what the rest of the story is, how it plays out, you can watch some let's plays, you can read some you know, uh, summaries, whatever you wanna do. But ultimately I say play part one, solid 20 hour experience, giving you all the good stuff. You get the music, you get the beautiful dioramas, you get the fun battle system, you get the fun dimension battles, and you get a nice manageable difficulty with a decent story. You know, not the best story, but but a decent story. Um, it, it Part one, easily recommendable, but just know that if you choose to go into part two, it's gonna get real and it's gonna get real fast, okay? So that's my advice to you. And if you play part two, use a guide, use a guide, please. Um, that's about all I have to say, I think. Thanks for checking me out. Um, I want to know, f I want to hear from you guys. Have you played Fantasian all the way through? Have you played other ultra hard JRPGs like the Saga series, like Shin Megami Tensei or like Octopath Traveler? And how does this game for you compare? I need to know because I'm not an expert, maybe you are. I think that your voice in this conversation is very important. So please let me know what you think about that down in the comment section below and take it easy.